Howdy, welcome to the third installment of grub fishing, the application of grub fishing. This is part three of three. We're out here, it's a chilly morning. We're going to go over some things about grub fishing, um, app, you know, actually applying it. We've gone over some of the rigging methods, uh, some of the tackle, and uh, th hypothetical applications. So today we're actually going to put the, this is where the rubber meets the road. Um, You're actually gonna. I'm gonna show you some basic stuff right now. It's winter time. We're looking at like water temperature about 40 something degrees, and a lot of times grubs can be the go-to method if you're not throwing a lot of rip baits and whatnot. If you just can't get them on that, or there's a lot of guys doing it, you can go behind them with a the grub and sometimes pick up a few key fish. Um, usually on a nice calm day like this, I start with my lower end of the weights, and right here I got a 1 8 ounce jig head. You can also use the mushroom heads like you guys are used to with the, the neds, but um, when you're fishing a grub, success, or even successfully, you get snagged a lot, so I like these uh, ball head jigs. Um, you want a 2 3 odd hook on there, but start off with an 8 ounce and work your way up there. It could be a 3 16th quarter ounce day. Wind picks up, it could be up to a 3 8 ounce. Anyway, today, since it is winter time, you know, a lot of parts of the country, the crawfish, they're usually very sluggish or they might even be hibernating. So a lot of times, the, this time of year, the crawfish are hibernating, so the fish are mainly on a shad bite. So I typically go with my lighter colors. So I'm going to go into my little box here, and I'm going to pull out, uh, let's see if we got, either a hologram shad, like a sexy shad, a uh, translucent type color. I'll show you this right here, this little three inch, three inch curl tail grub. Um, I'll go over how to rig this because we didn't go over to, or at least it'll be a refresher. So on this guy, a lot of people will rig them like this, or like this with the, the hook bend out. I don't. I've always rigged it the opposite. So typically I'll go put my jig head to see where it's going to lie. See, it's going to just pop out just at the end of that last rib. Right dead to right center. Pop out on that all the way up get that collar on there and it should be just like so all right so once I rig my grub up um, I kind of like the three-quarter oh here we go this is what we're gonna be I want to show you something real quick that I just saw while we were filming Here's a little thread fin shed that I just picked up while I was actually going to talk about making casts and what we retrieves. But this is what we're talking about. So this is the primary forage right here. And if you can see that, maybe if I can get it held up here. And see the color? Almost perfect. And size wise. about three, four inch little shad here. Anyway, after I got that rigged up, I kind of match in the hatch. And there's another one dead over there. Uh, it's kind of cold enough for these shad are kind of dying. Um, what I'll do is, usually I'll keep this, I'm gonna keep this simple. One of like pretty much three retrieves. The one's pretty short, uh, it, it um, kind of, pop, we call it pop and drop. Let it hit the bottom pop it up you let it drop another one is throwing it out there and slowly swimming it and another one is just rumming it or run, rummaging it down the on the against the ground and a lot of times like a double tilt grub that works good but anyway first thing i do here is i'm going to pick up my kind of parallel on the bank right here at first this is a point and i've already grabbed some of these shad uh the ones that are alive and some fish uh, they're actually a little further up but for structural purposes we're just going to do this so i go ahead and i whip this out kind of like a I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what the fish are doing, so it's a 45 degree angle to the bank. Sometimes when you get them that dialed in, you'll throw it you know, 90 degree or even parallel. Uh, but at first, I'm just throwing it this 45 degree angle because it gives me like a better opportunity to figure out what the fish are doing and what any given level. Any given level, just would you be quiet? Ruger the fishing dog, he wants to chime in on everything. Anyway, I let this thing kind of fall on a slack line. One, you like to watch it. 
uh, on these lighter jigs, they'll pick up the, sometimes they'll hit it on the ball, and you won't even, you won't even notice it, but knowing what the depth is and whatnot will definitely, definitely help out, knowing what the depth is, the depth of your fishing is, will definitely help out you kind of counting down, you'll recognize something's hit while watching the line, then I'll pick up the slack, pop it, let it drop, pop it, let it drop, it is super cold like this, sometimes you can dead stick it. Um, my other retrieve is doing a similar cast. I let it kind of fall to whatever depth I believe the fish are at, and then you slow roll it. And you can do it just, you can crawl this thing on the bottom. I mean, a lot of times slower the better, until you get in the summertime where you can just burn this thing, almost like a buzz bait. But, I mean, obviously you can burst it with the water column. The other method is I, you know, let's go ahead and just let it just fall down to the bottom there. Take it and you just, you should be able to fill every rock. And watch the rod tip, watch the rod tip, and it'll just pop, 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 and all of a sudden, bam, usually those are kind of vicious strikes. You're getting a reaction out of them. The thing's just rolling over a rock and snapping across it. cast again we're getting closer to the fish that I've graphed and I, in fact I can see some on, on my graph here. But I'm gonna go ahead and fish up closer because I'm trying to demonstrate you know this technique. So I let it kind of fall where you know I'm probably fishing in about 10 foot of water right there. I'm gonna shake it. You can also shake this thing so you pop we call it P and D pop and then drop them. So pop it, let that thing drop. Pop it up. Drop. And in this case, I can see them kind of suspended over, it looks like about between 10 and 15 feet. I'm, I just take this and I'll just slow roll it. The key is, I mean, you experiment with colors, you can experiment with, experiment with retrieves. I think we kind of got a good good basis here after seeing that shad. And you just keep on casting. I mean, sometimes it takes a little bit. Once you find them and start developing something, then you can, you know, bow position and and, uh, and, and casting accuracy and, and uh, dialing it into a pattern. That's when it start, that starts mattering. A lot of time on the winter days, I can get them on the fall when this thing's falling because it kind of does a little pin to them. Picked one up. Just like we were talking about. <sighs> when you are fighting a grub fish, you notice it is in the top of his mouth. You can use it as leverage. They can use that grub as leverage. This one is right in the bone, which is good. That's where you want it. Sometimes they'll get around here, and you see he's been caught before. And they'll actually use that as leverage to get off. That's one downside about grub fishing. But if you get him like that, uh, you can really, you're going to be able to land him nine times out of ten. That is a keeper fish. So we'll t hold him for pictures. What you'll notice I was doing there is pretty much what we talked about. Cast it out, 45 degree angle. He's about 10, 12 foot of water. Let it fall uh, when I picked up the slack. You know, I was just getting ready to shake it. Uh, there was just a lot of pressure, and that's what happens when the water temperature is, is so cold. We're at like 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but this little grub just produced a keeper spot, uh, spotted bass here on, this is, we're on Table Rock Lake, so uh, that's a good tournament fish, real fat, he's, he's full of shad, and, um, but real lethargic, and, and like I was explaining, uh, how you hook a fish on a grub uh, determines a lot of your, your ability to, to land them, um, and how you play a fish, so when you do get a grub fish, you do 
you don't want them to go to the surface because uh, a lot of times you'll hook them on the side of the mouth or whatnot. That one luckily was hooked in the top and he, he probably wasn't going to be able to throw that hook. Uh, but when they're a little more aggressive and whatnot, sometimes you'll get them on the side or whatnot and they will jump and it's imperative that you keep your rod tip down and then play that fish. Uh, it's a finesse tactic, so don't worry about horsing them in or anything. How's it going? Uh, so this is one of our grub fish. Uh, he's acting a little funky, so I want to get him back in the water. And uh, he might have a little bit of the bends. But anyway, real nice solid fish. Take a look at him, but full of shad. He's up here just eating them real cold, 40 degree water temperature.